It's your favorite therapist, Malara Green, and I hope that you came here ready to actually be on the therapist seat. But before I get you on the seat, I want to introduce you to 13-year-old me. When I was 13, I was the youngest freshman at school, and I remember this was the first day of gym. I'm already scared and terrified. I never had to change out in front of anybody before, but my gym teacher said, I need you to get on the scale. I got on the scale and it read 215 pounds. And when she looked at me, it was with so much utter disgust that she couldn't understand this 13-year-old girl was now basically morbidly obese. And it was at that moment in my life where I realized that I hated the very essence of who I was. I did not see my value, I did not see my worth, and I didn't understand why I was alive. And it was that day going in the locker room was the first time I ever had a suicidal ideation. So why do I tell you guys that? Today I want to talk about the you and inclusion the one that actually brings the other eight letters of this amazing word together. So much so, we're having a whole event today on this topic. I want you to understand that if you don't get anything from anything else that I say today, that you are enough, you have enough, and you've done enough, and this is the moment where you get to see the beauty that you bring into this world today. So where do we start? I want to talk to you guys about utilizing self-love as the key to CPR, to the silent death of inclusion, and that is comparison. We have to learn how to build harmony in every dimension of our lives, and those dimensions are your spiritual, your mental, your emotional, your physical, your social, and your cash flow dimension. Why do I say that? Because if spiritually you are not connected to who you are, to the inner essence of your soul, you're going to continue to be off track and look at everybody else's life as better than yours. There is no two people that are the same. And you have to understand what type of phone you are. Listen, they're trying to change charges now, but back in the day, an Android charger can't charge my iPhone, baby. And I had to understand what type of phone am I? What are the apps that I need to download? What are the things that I need to have? Who do I have charging me up? But we have to look at that outlet in the wall. If I do not pay Dominion power, I'm not gonna have anything to plug anything into. And there are some of you sitting in the audience right now that just got a spiritual collection notice because you have not tapped into your inner essence of who you truly are in a very long time. Today, I want to remind you, it's time to pay that bill. It's time to really sit back and see how amazing you are, how you were fashioned with everything that you need already inside of you, that spiritual, that soul, that inner essence. That's how you know that you are included because there is a seat for everybody at the table. So where do we go from here? We learn the key of self-love, and it starts with embracing your story. For a very long time, I get asked, Malara, you're so transparent. Aren't you afraid that people are going to say anything about you? Listen, if they ever take my license away from me, it just means I don't need it anymore. Because I would rather tell my story about my own struggles with PTSD, how I'm a therapist with a therapist. I'm a life coach with a life coach. I'm a health coach with a physical trainer and everything underneath the sun. Because my story is what's going to empower me and empower other people to see that they have value and worth. You are not by yourself. Because once I understood that I could be empowered to put my hand back and pull other people up with me, I am not successful on my own. I'm not on this stage by myself. I am accompanied by every ancestor, by Michael and Myra, by Michael Jr., by my children. I am embodied by everybody who's ever touched me. So I'm empowered to get that power back, even if at 13 I heard you're 215 pounds because I'm still lovable. You are loved if you don't do anything else. If you don't get another degree, if you don't do another certification, if you don't get married, if your kids aren't successful, I want you to know that you are lovable because everything you need is already inside of you. Because then you can be faithful to your goals, dreams, and aspirations. Don't stop. Get it, get it, like the Uncle Luke used to tell us. 
Because at the end of the day, when you actually stop going forward, there is a cancer that only you hold the antidote to. Are you going to be selfish by stop living and somebody else die? When we are talking about the self-love thing, we have to do it not because it's selfish, but because it includes everybody else that's attached to me. If you haven't caught it yet, I'm spelling self-love. Once we understand that, then we can live liberated. I'm going to be bold wherever I go. When I walk into a room, the energy changes before I even speak a word. It's not cocky. It's confidence. It's knowing what I bring to the table so then when my brother and my sister come next to me, we can actually hold hands instead of me not wanting to spend space and time with you. So when opportunities come, I'm going to be ready for it because I know that I'm enough to be prepared for when whatever I want to happen, it happens. I am on this stage because I spoke it on Facebook and it was a Facebook status that this year will be the year that I do a commencement speech and a TEDx talk. And two weeks later, this was actually posted. I was prepared for the opportunity. Are you prepared for when your opportunity come to you? Hold your hands out for me and just close your fists. If I was to drop everything into your hand that you've been asking for, would you have room to catch it? It is time for you to open up your hands. It is time for you to stop hoarding your resources. It is time for you to make sure that the people that are attached to you can also be successful. And if you are listening to me right now and you feel like you don't have anywhere else to go, when you feel like everything is going wrong, you feel like you don't know what to do, let this be the moment that I ventilate you. When I was 17 years old, my depression got so bad, I wanted to take my life. And it was my father who chose life for me in a moment where I wanted to choose death. And it was him that actually served as ventilation into my life so I could stand on the stage with two feet to say that your life is worth living. Don't go out of this room the same way that you came in. Please know that you are the best you there is. You are more than enough. And everything that you need is already inside of you. So continue to evolve. Evolve into who you were created to be. So when you are thinking about inclusion, there is no inclusion without you. And if you don't know that your life is worth living, I'm a living testament standing before you as someone when I was 17 years old, I was not supposed to have life in my body right now at this moment. I was supposed to add to what CDC says is 139 successful suicides in the United States alone and some we cannot count because they're actual overdoses. I was supposed to have been a part of that number, but instead I am standing on the stage today to inspire you to don't become a part of it either because you are needed and you are necessary. Thank you for your time. Peace and blessings.